Adam, for all intents and purposes, became the first zoologist. They had an assembly line going on in the garden. God would make the animals, and it was Adam's job to name them. Adam was employed by God. He worked with and for God. And we know in the scriptures that God realized that Adam was lonely, so he allowed Adam to take advantage of the job family leave act. And Adam took some time off work for family time. God performed surgery on Adam. He performed the first surgery on him. He put him to sleep, and he took a rib and from him, and he created a woman. And when Adam woke up, he said, This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. But see, there's already a problem, saints. You remember how God created the animals and Adam would name them? And after Adam named the animals, they went on to reproduce and to prosper. The first thing Adam did after God created the animals was to name them. See, it was their name that gave them their uniqueness. It was their name that gave them their purpose. Stay with me. It was their name that defined their species, their function, and their unique proclivities. They didn't know or have their sense of purpose until they were given a name. And what's so profound about this, as I've studied the scriptures, is that Eve was cre- after Eve was created, Adam did not immediately give her a name. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Go back and check the text. After, this, after Eve was created, he did not give Eve a name. He named all the beasts of the field, He named every fowl of the air. He poured into them by defining them. But he didn't take the time to give his soulmate, the one who God created just for him, the one who would walk by his side and be a helpmeet for him, a name. He finally gave her a name after they disobeyed God and God placed judgment upon them in Genesis 3 and 20. And that's why we read that. And because he roamed around in the garden without a name, without a sense of belonging, without a sense of purpose, that it was that was the perfect opportunity for the enemy to come in. Does that sound familiar? Today, so many of us, so many of us in women in terms of uh, are roaming around the garden of your lives, confused, lost, bitter, in a state of loneliness, all because you're waiting on a man to give you a name. And if we be honest tonight, we can say that we've done some of the most regrettable things when we were lonely. When we wanted to feel love, when we wanted to feel a sense of purpose, the enemy came in to try to destroy us and to deceive us, all because we found ourselves in a place where we didn't have a name. So the enemy came to trick Eve and up by a being using a serpent, which the Bible says was more subtle than any beast of the field. In other words, he used an expert at their craft, and the enemy used, and the enemy today uses people in our lives that are highly skilled in bringing drama in our lives. They were the best in their field when they came to hurt us with their confusing, their lying, their deceiving, and their, and their trick used to trick us up. They were a master in their craft at causing drama and confusion in our lives and creating healthy soul ties. I have a weekly broadcast, radio broadcast, and the other day a woman called and she told me, she told me about a man that she's been seeing for nine and a half years. He won't commit to her, and the bond is so strong that she can't find her way to get away from him. He's close with her children, he's close with her, and she feels that the only way that she can break this soul tie and that she can get away from him and that she can have the peace in her life is to move out of town. See, like Adam, he's so busy out and about giving other animals names. Oh, I wish I had somebody right here. Instead of making her his priority. See, he's been so busy playing Dr. Doolittle that he had no time to give the woman who loves him a name. He's too busy to call too busy to test, so busy being preoccupied with unfruitful things, and women, you you see the signs, you know when a man is playing you or not, 
you know when a man is playing with your emotions, and you know when the relationship that you're in is not going anywhere. Now, I'm not talking to everybody, but I'm talking to somebody tonight. But we're talking about the emancipation in your name. Let's look at Paul, who was Saul from Tarsus. We know that Paul was converted on his way to Damascus. When he was Saul, he persecuted the Jews. And what was interesting about, about it is that Saul is a Hebrew name, yet he persecuted the Jews with a name just like theirs. See, there are folks right now on our jobs and in church who have the same title as us. They look like us. They appear to be like us. But what they do is cause confusion around us. If, and if you know how it is when it's uh, uh, your job. It's, it's on your job. It's the same coworker. You have the same title as you. You know, it's a person that uh, if you're a minister, you have you're a minister at your church. If it's, it's your fellow minister or it's the person working beside you with the same title. If you're a pastor, it's a fellow pastor in town who's trying to bring you down. And what you may not know is that the name Saul means inquire. And what and when folks are in inquiry mode. What they're doing is if they don't understand certain things about you, so they persecute what they don't understand. So Saul was persecuting the Jews because he didn't understand them. So, so with people that don't understand us, they, their job is they persecute us. They don't understand. They, there's people around us. They don't understand how you can afford uh, to drive the car that you drive. They don't understand how you got that man, how you got that woman. They don't understand how you can afford to live in that house. They don't understand how you got that promotion on your job. So they instantly go into inquiry mode. It's a mode of attack. But after Saul's conversion, his name was changed to Paul, check this, which means stop. And how many of you know that God will take our enemies out of inquire, which is based on the insecurities, and he'll place them on stop? That's so good. Good for nothing insecure rascal that has always been an insecurity an inquiry mode in your life because they don't trust you, because they don't understand you, because they never took the time to really get to know you. When you went out, they always blew up your phone and asking you where, where you're at and, and, and where you're going and who, who you're going to be with. And that person who was always in inquiry mode, if you remember how God changed their name to stop, to take them out of your lives. Now, we're going to talk about the emancipation in your name. When we look at the story of Moses, we remember Moses when he was a baby, and his mother couldn't hide him any longer, so she placed him in a basket and placed him in a river. And we know, as the, as the word says, that Pharaoh's daughter found him in the river, and she named him Moses, which means he, uh, he who draws out because he was drawn out of the water. And we know that God used Moses to lead his people out of Egypt. And that just goes to show you, I want to encourage you tonight. Some of you have been through so many things in your lives. Some of you have been through so many storms in your lives. Some of you have been through so much turmoil in your life that you almost felt like you threw a basket case. But how many people know tonight that no matter what you've been through, God, just like Moses, will use a basket case to deliver his people. Your life may have been all jacked up and the enemy may have had you at a point where you thought you were going to lose your mind. You thought you were nothing but a basket case. But now you're doing great things for God. You're being used by God by never before because there is emancipation in your name. Sisters and sisters, I want you to consider this for Freedom Month. God wants to emancipate you. He wants to deliver you from the hurts and pains of your past. He wants to use you in a mighty way. But the problem is it's time for a new name. If we take the word name, and check this, I want you to check this, and spell, and you start to spell the name, main backwards, E, you come up with E-M-A-N. And that's the beginning of spelling the word emancipation. See, there's emancipation in your name. Look at all the TV actors and celebrities and artists who have changed their name for the emancipation. Their birth name wasn't, a, wasn't good enough or wasn't, or wasn't, they didn't have enough star quality in it, or it was too long, it was a, or it wasn't a name that had any type of flow to it, so they felt that it was going to impede their success. So what they did was they changed their name. And let me give you some examples. 
Jason Alexander, who plays George from the TV show Seinfeld, name was J. Scott Greenspan. Woody Allen's original name was Alan Stewart, Konigsberg. John Wayne's name was Marion Michael Morrison. Chevy Chase's name was Cornelius Crane Chase. Sean Connery, who played in all the, most of the James Bond movies, name was Thomas Connery. Tom Cruise's name was Thomas Cruise Maypother the Fourth. Andy Dickinson's name was Angeline Brown. Actor Vin Diesel's name was Mark Vincent. Jamie Foxx's name was Eric Bishop. Whoopi Goldberg's name was Karen Johnson. Nene Lake's name was Lenithia Monique Johnson. Director and actor Spike Lee's name was Shelton Lee. Ving Rain's name was Irvin Rain. Snoop Dogg's name was Calvin Brodus Jr. And Oprah Winfrey's name was Oprah Winfrey. And I've come to let you know tonight that there's emancipation in your name. But tonight, to change your name, because um, you're, uh, you're going to have to change your name because you're about to receive a deliverance like you've never faced, that you've never had before. You're about to be set free tonight. Do you believe it? You're about to do great things for God. You're getting ready to experience a peace that you've never felt before. You're getting ready to get a sense of purpose. The pain from the past will be left behind you. The folks who have hurt you and tried to damage and tarnish your name will be in, they will go from inquiry mode, like we said about Saul, to stop to Paul. You don't have to, to physically change your name tonight. But tonight, the name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to spiritually change your name tonight. So I'm asking Sister Jamie tonight to take a minute to unmute all of the lines, everyone that's on the phone tonight, and I want you to do something for me. We're going to give you a minute here if you can just go ahead on and unmute every line tonight. What was the code that they need to press in order to unmute their phones if they self-muted? Okay. Nina? You should be unmuted now. It is. Yeah. Okay. All right. I want you real quickly. I want you real quickly to, to listen to what I'm saying here. All these years, God wanted to give you a new name, but your line was muted. And now your line is being unmuted, which is a, it's a symbolic gesture. And now you're going to be able to speak. And the word name spelled backwards is Iman, E-M-A-N. And Iman means faith. And tonight, we're going to reverse the curse that others have put on your name. Tonight in faith. And when I count to three, I'm going to count to three. And on the count of three, I want you to shout your name out. Don't worry about who's around you. Don't worry about the people in your house. Because God is getting, hallelujah, is getting ready to do something that he's never done before in your life for freedom month. Sisters and brothers, those of you that are on this call, I want you to hear me. And I want you to to listen. Because God is about to make a breakthrough in your life by giving you a new name. It's going to be a spiritual name. He's about to give you emancipation in your name. So on the count of three, I don't want you just to whisper it. I don't want you just to speak it. I want you to shout out your first name. In faith, in Jesus' name. And when you shout it out on the count of three, we believe in God that he's going to heal all the hurts in the past, all the people that have spoken against your name, all the people that have tried to keep you all the news, the tricks that the enemy has tried to do to keep you down, all of the mistakes that you made in the name of Jesus. We believe that healing is going to take place in the name of Jesus. Those of you that know how to pray, you can go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. 
Because we have prayer in here. When we come to the name of the Lord, that God is going to move by His power. That God is going to move by His Spirit. And it's the night that you will never forget. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We count one. In the name of Jesus. Lord, all the hurts. All the pain. All the worry. All the trouble. All the soul cause. All the danger. All the negative. All the things that the enemy is trying to do. Will be the spell right there. In the name of Jesus. We count number two. In the name of Jesus. God is giving us the chance. Go back to our situation. And you get away and take a basket to and make you the deliverer of God's people. In the name of Jesus. Believe it and walk in it. In Jesus' name. And when I say number three, I want you to shout your first name. As loud as you can. Out to God. As God is going to spiritually take the natural and make a spiritual connotation to it. So now all when people call your name, they won't call it the same way they've been calling it. They're not going to look at your name the same as they have in the past. Your ex is not going to see your name in the negative way that it's been seen before. The enemy is not going to use your name the way that he's used it in the past. Your whole deliverance will take place. And you will understand that here tonight, there's going to be emancipation in your name in the name of Jesus. One, two, Three, shout out your name. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh,